Hey guys, welcome back. This is our 10th episode. I think that's kind of crazy that we've gotten to 10. No, oh, it's like, it's a milestone. Yeah, I think so. It's like a 10th of the way to 100. You are right. <laughs> <laughs> really easy math to apply. Good job. I know. Um, this is How To 911, and I'm Sammy. And Erica. And we're going to talk to you a little bit more about last episode we talked about the fire police side of things and questions and like why we ask the questions that we do. I feel like I just did an eye roll. Why we ask the questions. <laughs> yeah. So glad we have this on video. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. <laughs> She's helped us a lot with these questions yeah. that we've had to do. Anyways, um, so this time we're gonna give you the, the medical side of our questioning. Our medical side, we don't have as much open room when it comes to mm-hmm. what we ask, um, which I'm okay with because when it came when it comes to medical situations, I know nothing mm-hmm. about I'm not a doctor. That's right. what I'm gonna say. And we're not medically trained, right? So I mean, we're trained in like certain life saving yes. aspects, like we're CPR trained, but we don't have we didn't go to any kind of EMT medical school. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm thankful that we have our um, set questions because otherwise I'd probably just be like, oh, ambulance is coming. And you'd be like, but what do I do? They're bleeding out. Mm-hmm. So it's, I think it's a really helpful tool. Yeah. And it makes me feel a little bit less stressed when something serious is happening. Yes. Yes. So um, it's probably the why. The, why. the reason why if... Um, Careful. Careful. Um, if you have to... If you have to, if you have called an ambulance more than once and you're in our jurisdiction or within the county, mm-hmm. um, you kind of hear the same questions, mm-hmm. so you might be prepared for what we are going to be asking. So, you know, just be patient with us if you're a little annoyed that we have to ask the same questions every single time. We have to ask that for a reason and we're going to explain why. Um, first thing is first goes back to episode one, goes back to the ground roots of everything. You call 911, we have to get your address mm-hmm. of where this is happening at. So that's our first question, always, no matter what. And especially for medical stuff, it's even more imperative that you repeat that. Mm-hmm. Because if you're in a medical emergency, the last thing that I want is to send them to the wrong house. Right. That break, that would upset me and I'm sure it would upset the responders mm-hmm. because that's all that they want to do is come to your house and help you. Um, especially if it's like from on one side of the town to the next side. Like we're gonna have to we we dispatch a certain ambulance and fire truck depending on the situation and they're it's not in their jurisdiction so it's gonna be in a different ambulance and fire truck. So we have to get them regoing or whatever it is. If it's just down the house, yes we can redirect the same ambulance, but depending on where it is in town we might have to send out a whole new crew if we didn't carry your address correctly, right. which isn't fun for anybody involved. And that's why we do the um, address twice, because we make sure we hear it right, and sometimes people have just moved. Mm-hmm. They forget where they are, and they say I'm at 123 West 10th, and then you're like, okay, repeat it, and they're like, I mean, I was at 444. Seconds, yeah, whatever the new address is, so right, it'll make them listen to themselves say it again as well, right? And again, going back to our roots, just make sure that you're aware of your address if you don't know how, or if there's children in the house, just make sure they're aware of those things because we've had many children callers mm-hmm. that have saved lives, and it's very important that even if they can't express to us what's happening, if we get an address, we'll get somebody there. Second question goes again back to our roots of what's the phone number that you're calling from? Again, a lot of medicals that we get, like up in like the canyon, like super far out, like we need a callback number Mm -hmm. just in case because sometimes those phone numbers come back as disconnected depending on the service that they have. Mm -hmm. Um, And just so we make sure that we have the right phone number. Sometimes people get transferred. Yes. On admin lines, and so if we see that it's transferred from the sheriff's office, we want to make sure we have your phone number, not the sheriff's office phone number. And we have um, big, you know, hospital systems here. So UC Health banner. If the 
Um, and they, so they have switchboards. So mm -hmm. if someone from a UC Health doctor's office is calling and it gets routed through their call center, Fort Collins has to transfer, us, transfer them to us and then it looks like they're calling from um, Fort Collins. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure we have your address, <laughs> phone number. But we also want to make sure you have, yeah, <laughs> phone number and address. Um, so the two simple things that we always ask, and then the third simple thing that we always ask is, wait, we're gonna go through this again. The third simple thing that we always say in request of you is tell us exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say tell me, I'm not gonna say tell us, unless some voices in my head tell us <laughs> exactly <laughs> what's happening. <laughs> no, tell me exactly what's happening, um, or tell me exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. I kind of flip between the two depending, depending on the, what I hear that's going on. Right. Um, or if they've already kind of said it, and so I have a general idea, but I'm like, tell me exactly. Yeah, like some people will say, I just found him on the ground, mm -hmm. or um, he's bleeding out. Okay, well, tell me exactly what happened, because I need to know if there's safe safety, do I need some police? Um, a lot of our medical um, cards, I'm always cracking up this. Nature codes, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> a lot of them, are really dependent on mechanism of injury. Mm -hmm. um, so if somebody has fallen and they're on the ground, we want to know how, I'm not gonna go into that quite yet, right. but it's important for us to know if it's a fall versus if somebody, um, how else would you just end up on the ground? You fainted, you, you tripped, fainted. you fell off the ladder, mm -hmm. someone punched you in the face. Um, yeah, so if you just tell me they're on the ground, we're gonna dig a little bit more. If you yes. don't give us a specific, like they're vomiting and I need help, Right. I'm not, I mean, I'm probably still going to be like, tell me exactly what happened because vomiting can still be one of those, right? Like, what happened? But or I, they're having a seizure. Oh, done. There you go. They're That's having a stroke. stroke. Yes. yes. <laughs> Much. <laughs> I have a headache. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to say all of them now. <laughs> I keep testing. And those, your nature codes are chief complaints. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Erica already, um, I'm sure you guys can see in the video, <laughs> it's written <laughs> and edited my script because I was just like, writing this and I was like, I mashed two things together that are two completely separate things. I think I had it figured oh, out. Oh, thank goodness. It's all there. Um, so before we get into the chief complaints, because there's a lot of them. There's 33 that we use. 33. 33 ways that we can go with what you tell us as to our line of questioning. Right. Um, so after we ask those three questions, then we have other follow-up questions that we ask depending on the situation. These are always gonna be the same. There's like very few, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Deviations. Circumstances. Or... Such as? Yes. In which we wouldn't ask these questions. Right. Right. Unless the question, the answers are already obvious. Uh, is, yeah, also correct. Yes, so if you call in and say, my 64-year-old father tripped and fell, he is now talking to me on the ground, asking for some water. Yeah. I have a lot of the questions that we will talk about answered. <laughs> literally have all of them. <laughs> right. We're good. So the great thing about this is that I'm pretty sure we, I don't know if I this paper. So tell me exactly what happened. Do you need to look, should we look at anything more? If you want. To me, the, it's, yeah, I could say it, I could spout it off right now, but I do want to look at it. Yeah, let's look at it. <laughs> wow, we're going to edit all of this out. No, it's so exciting. Um, or do we want the big one? Oh, I, here, here, yeah. I don't, I don't like you, that thing. That's good. I like it. I, was, I wanted this one anyway. Did you? Yeah. I, this is <laughs> my honking <laughs> squeaker. This is the real thing that we use if our um, computer system goes down. So we use ProQA as our software, and if this is our hard copy of what we use on the computer. Yeah, so we had to use this the other day because cab went down, so. Do you want to make it? Yeah, nice little. They, it's really fun to like, just time waster. It's very tactile, like a fidget spinner. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say, never mind. Um, so we have, I don't know if I watched all of this, but, um, so this is gonna be like, kind of what we already talked about, the entry area, where it says, what's the address, phone number, tell me exactly what happened. And then um, the next question after that is, are you with the patient now? Um, I usually don't use that because in, in 
So tell me exactly what, I don't use that verbatim, let me try to fix that. Because most of the time when I say tell me exactly what happened, they'll say my father fell. And so I'll say, are you with him now? Right. And a patient is really if somebody doesn't give me that um, other relationship or pronoun. Or yeah, pronoun for me to with. fill it in. Right? Yeah. So um, are you with the patient now? And then depending on the circumstance, this next question we may not ask, this is typically usually the same thing every single time. But it says, um, how many people are sick slash hurt? Usually, unless it's like a car accident or um, CO, a leak, um, electrocution. electrocution, it's usually gonna be one person. You can usually, it's usually obvious. Yes, yes. So. I'll just say that depending on the circumstance, everything, like I tell people in training, everything is black and white until you're doing it. And then it can be, so all these things are, I always ask this unless. Yeah. So, but most of the time, unless they say, my father and my sister and my brother are all vomiting. If they only tell me that my father is vomiting, right. I'm gonna auto answer with one person. Right. Right. Um, so then the next is, I'm gonna skip that. Mm -hmm. um, how old is he slash she slash patient slash whatever the circumstances, how old are they, basically? Um, most of the time, it's somebody that you know that you're calling in about. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like 70% of the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're calling in because somebody just fell in the parking lot of Walmart. So you don't know how old they are, you can ask them, and that's helpful. But if you don't know, um, we have a follow-up question that we ask, or statement, so it's tell me approximately then, because we at least need to know an age range. Why is age range, wait, let me back up. Why is it important that we ask that you're with the patient? Erica? Oh, I was like, are you, is this rhetorical, like you're gonna be like, and then the answer is. I was going to, but I, <laughs> nothing came to my brain, so I was like, <laughs> nudge it you're like, you. And <laughs> help me out. Uh, we wanna know, because it will help with the line of questioning and the instructions that we will talk about in a little bit, um, helping out the patient. Yeah. Yeah, in the future. That needs to be done. Yeah. And then so uh, age is important because of, again, like certain things such as if we do need to start doing CPR or um, a lot of like heart conditions, yeah. it's important to know how old they are because then that'll, if, depending if, the, if they're in the age range of certain conditions of whatever the circumstances, it'll add additional questions. Mm -hmm for us to ask to verify, like chest pain's the one that comes to my mind, but the age range. Right, and, and then pregnancy. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think the seizure card has, if they're in a age range where you could be pregnant, they'll ask if they are or had been. Right, yeah, so it'll just pop up with additional questions and it's just also important for the responders to know when they're coming up because there's obviously different equipment for a child than there is an adult. Sure. So, just helpful for everybody all around. Um, the next question that we ask is, are they awake? And we want to know that because a level of consciousness is what tells us how severe the situation may or may not be. Mm -hmm. So that's always important to know. And then the next is, are they breathing? Which is also important because if you're not breathing, you're not okay and we need to get help even faster. So these questions, it might be a little annoying, especially if it's not a severe situation. If somebody just needs to go to the hospital because they don't feel well or whatever the reason may be, that's totally fine. But we need to ask these questions because what are the chances that they aren't awake and they aren't breathing and you didn't tell us that before? And right. if we didn't ask these follow-up questions, when would we have figured it out? And then would that have changed the response? Right. So, and I, there's something in here that the law or rule or whatever it is, if, if you don't look for it, you're not going to find out. If right. you don't ask it, we, we don't know. Right. We can't assume. Right. I, it, I would hate for, wouldn't you hate for us to assume that they were awake and breathing and then they weren't and we could have started CPR a lot earlier, which we'll get into that in a second. Um, but so then after that, after those, it says here six questions. I think we gave a couple more because some of them are follow-up questions. Mm -hmm. um, but with the first six basic six questions that we asked, then we can go into the specific reason in which why you're calling. 
Right. So after those six questions called case entry, I should know which chief complaint I'm going to choose. Mm -hmm. And I have 33 options. Not everything's going to be perfectly fit into those 33, but I'll do the best I can. Yeah. And then there's sometimes where it can fit into more than one. Yes. And so then we have to try to figure out in our brains, like, which one's the most severe, which way should I go with it? Mm -hmm. um, like, they're vomiting, they have a headache, their back hurts, and um, they're having a difficulty breathing. All of those four things that are going on, I'm going to choose the breathing card because that's the biggest concern. If the breathing wasn't in there, I probably would have gone, ugh, headache? Or back pain? I forgot what that was. I said, I don't remember now. I'm going to make up new ones. <laughs> Vomiting, headache, back pain, difficulty breathing. I thought I would do headache. I mean, it's really hard to, I don't have to, I'm not typing it in, so like, uh-huh, back pain. So what What happened with this person to have all of this? They're just not, they're not feeling good? They're just not feeling good. Yeah. Yeah. It just all of a sudden they came over, saw their dad, and he just wasn't feeling well. He was weak. He had a headache, and he had some back pain, and he has difficulty breathing. And he's on O2. Let me keep making a laundry list. <laughs> difficulty breathing, I think, and then back pain. And if all of that is like, yeah, he's difficulty breathing because that's normal for him, then he goes to this. Yeah. But we have the rules of scene safety, mm -hmm. trauma, medical. So if he's danger, we go whatever addresses that first. If it's something traumatic, we go there, and then we go to medical after that. Yeah. And the difference between trauma and medical? Something done ex to you externally versus something that your body's just doing on your own. So if you're bleeding and I say, why are you bleeding? It's my nose versus I'm bleeding because somebody stabbed me. Trauma. Yeah. Scene safety, trauma, or medical. Right. Someone stabbed you, so trauma and scene safety. Right. Yeah. So there's that. Um, okay, so we are going to kind of break down like each card just give you like not break down we're just going to tell you yeah what, what they have. are yeah um so it's in alphabetical order which is cool for like ocd people i guess <laughs> it really doesn't matter i guess oh i'm sorry I'm just speak, speak. <laughs> um so the first card is abdominal pain slash problem so basically my stomach hurts uh as long as it's not traumatic like you've got stabbed and that's why your stomach hurts yeah we'll go yep. abdo pain yep um next one is um, allergic reactions, allergies, um, wow, how do you say that word? Envenomations. Thank you. Envenomations. So like bee stings, um, spider bites, spider bites, like not just specifically like things with venom, such as a spider and a bee that people or, could. Or a snake. Or a snake, yeah, that's it's a good a one. snake. Yeah, so that one's that one. Um, the next one is... Um, animal bites slash attacks so that's for like larger animals so like if you get by a dog um, a cat yeah they don't have venom so yeah um, they can attack it so things that I mean now that I'm gonna say that it's gonna happen but um, like bear attacks um, <laughs> don't oh please no I I'm not gonna lie we had the Mailman attack here a few months ago. We took that call. We did? Yeah. Where was I? <laughs> uh, probably not. You, I don't remember what day it was. Tyler was in training. Took that call. Hi, Tyler. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, Tyler. You took that call, and then, so even though it's not in the city, we dispatch for the southern half of Anne Arbor County, mm -hmm. so we sent our ambulance and Fire trucks up there, and then um, the sheriff's office had their deputies head over. Yeah, so this is one of those where we would probably want police to respond to as well yes. for scene safety because yes. if there is a mountain lion or a uh, dog that is attacking somebody, um, we're going to need somebody to control the scene before right. paramedic because it's not going to do anyone any good if a paramedic runs in there and gets attacked by the dog too. Right. So. Um, Remember that when you're just asking for us to send them. Um, scene safety. 
Same, same. Next one is not a fun one. Um, assault, sex assault, and stun gun, which is the most random thing to add in. It's very it? specific. It's super specific. I, I mean, not, not, I'm going to keep knocking on wood. I would use this for the stun gun. I have not either. But I imagine that they wanted to make sure that there is a distinction because we'll get to mm -hmm. a card later on where gun is involved as well. So to make right. that distinction between um, external versus internal. Right. So this one obviously is one that is scene safety. Yes. So if it's something that's currently going on, we're going to send police. Or if there's something where you don't know where the assailant is, um, we're going to send police. Mm -hmm. If it's something that happened months ago and you're at home, or like days ago, or it was right. just a previous thing, and you're wanting to report it now, and you're wanting to go to the hospital for it, that's totally fine. We'll send you a paramedic then, if the, as long as the assailant is no longer in the area. Right. Correct. We'll still send you one, even if the assailant is still in the area, but <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely going not to have over there. We're sorry. officers <laughs> going to um, respond and make sure that the paramedics are safe. Right. And also, for the most part, you're going to get contact with an officer for an assault. Yes. Um, or sex assault, whatever the assault may be. You'll, you'll get contact from an officer because that's there's a report that might right. be made. Yes. Kind of important. Next one is back pain. Um, so, this is for non traumatic. Mm -hmm. So, this is you feel like you just pulled something and your back hurts. Um, I don't have back pain. I don't know how it happens. No, um, back pain can be a symptom of a heart attack. So oh, yeah, if you're yeah, calling yeah. and say, I just have, I just feel like like my side, like my back is just ripping, that's a symptom of a heart attack. So we ask that um, very specifically um, to describe the pain. Yeah. Um, and we also will ask, depending on the age range, if you also have chest pain or chest discomfort, so we can narrow it down a little bit. Right. There's a lot of things that I didn't realize were like symptoms of a heart attack, uh, like jaw, mm -hmm. uh, shoulder pain. Shoulder pain. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting how the body works, right? Yes. Um, so yeah, as long as it's non-traumatic back pain, we'll go there and it'll correct us if it finds that it might be possibly a chest pain or heart yes. problem. So correcting us is called shunting. shunting. I'm going to start saying shunting from now on. Everyone's going to know what I'm saying. Yes. Uh, so it'll shunt us to the chest pain card so we can ask more appropriate questions following chest pain. Um, next is a big thing for us, breathing problems. Just because, like we said earlier, breathing is kind of important when it comes to your life. Living. <laughs> yeah. um, so there's a few questions that we ask for that. I don't think it, it will shunt you to a different card, basically. A prim it's a primary problem when it comes to breathing. So great. Um, it's pretty important. And depending on how severe the breathing problem is, um, it'll have us. I don't know what the grace says. I'm going to say this. Mm -hmm. It'll have us send after like a question or even two questions, depending on what you say. Mm -hmm. um, have us send the paramedics because obviously they, it's a severe enough situation that they need to get going now. Um, and then we will go back to questioning. So, yes. It might be kind of, it's just kind of funny sometimes when you can hear and when you play back and you're like, is she completely on her? And they're like, no. And then you're, there's like the pause where we're like, we're trying to work through uh, like, yeah. Uh, okay, send, uh, 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 does she have difficulty? <laughs> you know? So, and <laughs> we are working while we're quiet. Yeah, so we're, that's, that's another thing that I do want to just like say really quick. Like, working through the computer, like with this, I, really love the card sets. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that about me, but I love the card sets because I can look to see what I'm going to be asking next okay. while getting the answer from somebody. With the computer, you have to get your answer before you know the next question. Sure. So I just don't like the like, pause that you can get mm -hmm. while you're trying to figure out what's going to come. Mm -hmm. You know, um, So I don't like working through the computer sometimes because there are things that like are obvious questions so you're going to hear a gap when we're like answering the mm -hmm. next question that you've already given us, maybe. So, we're working. We're working. And I thought you were going to go with like sending or initial signing or That's getting you. our units out. And I don't know if we'll touch on this later, but um, I'll jump in right now with it because why not? we're going that way. Uh, we do get 
I'll say graded, scored mm -hmm. on a random sampling of the calls that we take during the month. Um, it's our quality assurance process and they're part of our accreditation. And um, so we have a standard that we have to, we have 20 points that we have to um, meet throughout the year and it's asking these questions correctly and a slew of other things, but customer service is one of them. So if we have gaps where we're working through what we need to, but you're on the other end like, are you still oh. there? And that's not good for us. So we really want to make sure that we are talking to you the whole time, giving you updates on what we're doing, how we're doing it, why we're doing it, so you're not yeah. confused while yeah. you're sitting there like, where are they? I find myself, and I think a lot of us do this, that like after we ask a question and someone gives us the answer, I'll just be like, okay. Yes. And I'll like drag out the okay, <laughs> depending on like, <laughs> okay. <I'm> okay. <laughs> or I'll just be like, just, be, just give me one second, one yes. more second, I'm sorry, I'm trying to work through my computer here, so. I do that too, I'm like, my computer's catching up, sometimes I'm too fast for it, and <laughs> Eric is probably the best at this, so. No, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best. There we go. Okay. Um, so next is burns slash explosions. Um, so I think those are handled on the same card for like obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. um, this is also a scene safety kind of thing. like what exploded and why or like what is burning and why mm -hmm. and this is also one that we could possibly be setting fire out depending on what the situation is right something's uh, still on fire yeah so if like your oven explodes for whatever reason now your house is on fire and you're burned as right. well we're going to obviously send everybody that's needed for the situation mm -hmm. but um yeah that's it for that one burns burns Next is carbon monoxide inhalation. Okay, hold on. Carbon monoxide slash inhalation. Mm -hmm. Inhalation slash hazmat slash CBRN only. Chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear something. And if I'm going to this card and it's because of CBRN, I think that I would have been dead. <laughs> If it's nuclear? We, <laughs> we, I was going to say we'd have a lot of units responding. That but too. We'd have a lot of calls. <laughs> we'd have a lot of calls, a lot of units, a lot uh, of radio traffic. Um, yeah, so I think this is all handled on the same because it can, it basically has the same, like, I would think it would be the same question. Yes, like, seat safety, mm -hmm. um, if it's hazmat or carbon monoxide, we, basically all of them. Um, fire would be really important to get started um, because they have people trained right. for those kinds of things um, to handle those types of things and stuff like that. Um, yeah, scene safety, again, that's really big on that one too. Um, and then this is one of those that could have multiple patients, like we said before. Mm -hmm. So good to know, good to know, good to know. So this next card is um, one that we can go to after all those six questions that we asked, called the um, case entry questions, or yes. we can go to, is this a good time to put this in now? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So this card is cardiac arrest, let me take that, cardiac or respiratory arrest, slash, um, not to be too blunt, but it says death. death. So um, a lot of people call um, when things like this happen, and that's what we're here for. That's right. So, what I'm saying is that this we can go to this card after tell me exactly what happened because if you tell me, gosh, I can't even think. Like, uh, what's your scenario? My scenario is one that's not coming to my head right now. Like, she's not responsive. Like, right. if you just tell me someone's not responsive, or I'm, she collapsed. Yeah, she collapsed. I'm gonna go. How old is she? Are you with Are you with her now? How old is she? Um, is she awake? No. Is she breathing? No. I'm going to go to this card, and it's automatically, after we say, no, she's not awake, no, she's not breathing, it's already sending people. Um, but there's a way we can fast track it. If when we call and you say, and I, we, here I go again, <laughs> and I say, tell me exactly what happened, and you say, I just found my father, he's not awake, he's not breathing, I need somebody here. You, you already gave me the things yep. that I need to know that I need to send. So me asking, like, are you with her now? Or, I'm sorry, with him now? It, it's just, 
We don't need for, to. Like, yeah, we just don't need to. Um, we will have to ask what their age is just because of CPR instructions, which we'll get into in a little bit because it's different between the child and adult. But by um, your father is not a child, but. Or like a whim, uh, women. Uh, women. <laughs> a lot of people call in. Um, like with their children, no matter how old they are, they'll call them their baby. Sure. So that's like one of those things where it's like, if you say my baby's not awake, not breathing, I'm thinking a baby baby, but you're probably talking, you're probably, why am I saying things like this, Erica? <laughs> you you <laughs> may be saying, uh, talking about like your 16 year old or your 24 year old or you know, however old your child may or may not be, but that you still think is your baby because you have every right to. Yes. Um, so yeah, so those are things that we will need to ask, but it comes at a little bit of a faster pace when we fast track it. Yes. Yeah. Um, not that not every call that we handle isn't as important. It's just for these types of situations, I hope that you understand that it's a little bit more severe. We need to get people there a little bit faster. Right. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. Right. Yeah. So that that's our that's pretty much all that that card is, um, and that's another scene safety thing too. Right, we will, sometimes officers are closer than the paramedics and they are trained in CPR, right. so they can go in and help as well. Right, it's, it, it's really nice when you got all, all three agencies helping each other out to yeah. help somebody out, it's really great. Um, next one is chest pain slash chest discomfort, non-traumatic. So this is, you know, when you feel like you have chest tight tightness or your chest just hurts, something just doesn't feel right in your chest. I want to say nine times out of ten, but like for the most part, chest pain usually means heart attack. Mm -hmm. I'm not a doctor, again, don't quote me, right. but non-traumatic chest pain is typically heart-related. Um, but again, like we said earlier, it can be back pain, it can be in your shoulder, it can be in your jaw, so different things that we have to look out for and stuff. Um, that's it for that one. Choking. This one's pretty obvious. You're choking. I do want to say that this is another one that if when we ask, tell me exactly what happened, and you say, um, my son, he's choking on a piece of food or whatever, um, we have follow-up questions, well, we have follow-up questions in our um, case entry where we, can, we will verify are they breathing or coughing at all. Because if they're breathing or coughing at all, that is just a sign for us to... What, what am I trying to say? I would say the foot, if they're not, we're, we know we need to go somewhere else. We're going to be doing some kind of Heimlich CPR. Right. And if they are, that's good. Right. Something that I think people, I mean, I've never seen anybody choke in my life, so I imagine it's obviously a very like high stressful situation. Yes. Um, so when you see somebody choking, it, our callers are always frantic. I don't think I've ever had somebody call with a choking call and been like, call with a cucumber. <laughs> um, but they're always frantic, and I understand you have a right to be frantic because yes. somebody's choking. But if they're coughing, that means that there's... They're working on it. Yeah, they're, your body somehow has like the ways of working things down, even if you should have chewed a little bit better or shouldn't have put something in your mouth. But um, if you're breathing or coughing at all, that means that there's some air that's going in and some air that's going out. So we, for lack of a better way of saying it, we kind of want to just let them work through it. Definitely. So because, and another thing that we have a follow-up here is to say, do not slap them on the back. That's my first reaction when my cats, I almost said babies, see? <laughs> My cats start like um, vomiting or something. I like run up to them and I'm like, get it out, you know, yeah. and patting them on the back. And I've stopped doing that because I'm like, I'm going to make them choke on their vomit. Because if you pat them on the back um, or slap them on the back, um, you have the chance of lodging yeah. it to where they can't breathe at all. Right. So if they're coughing or they're breathing, do not slap them on the back because we don't want to lodge it anymore. And that's something that, you know, until I worked this job, I wouldn't have even thought about. So right. I understand why that's someone's first reaction. Yeah. Which it could. Never mind, I'm not going to say that. Okay. Yay. <laughs> um, so that's it for choking. Um, next is convulsion. Oh, okay, take two. Convulsions slash seizures. I cannot talk today. It's hard. So this is one of those where it does have the age range of, like, is she pregnant? So that's why that is important. Um, I will also, I just want to say people... You, so a lot of people haven't seen people have seizures before. Yeah. So this is a, another high 
stress call for, I mean, for calling 911, it's high stress anyway, but extra high stress to see someone in a seizure, I had to research what it looked like because oh, it's not what it looks like on it, TV. It definitely isn't, but people will call in screaming um, and you think that they, something else has happened and a seizure is scary, but as long as they are working through it, yes, it can go on too long and that's dangerous. If they're breathing after the seizure, that is good and we will talk about how we can do that afterwards, um, but it's very scary. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know if like it's inappropriate for this time, but seizures are sometimes a um, percent of cardiac arrest. Yes. I had a life save that way. A gentleman called in, said his wife was having a seizure. Great. Sent it out. I can't remember what the priority might have been, like a Charlie Decker, um, which we will talk about in a second. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it will make sense in just a second. Um, we did the check your breathing afterwards. It was okay. We checked it again. I think I checked it three times. Checked it again. We'll talk about how we can check the breathing status. And it was slower than the first time. Fine. Checked it a third time. It was agonal. We did chest compressions. She was able to walk out of the hospital neurologically intact. And yeah, yeah. saved her life. Saved her life. So that is a symptom yeah. of cardiac arrest. Yeah. Something to keep in mind. How ironic, because my life saved was also somebody that they called and they were like, he's in a seizure. And the next thing I know, we were like checking breathing and they're like, he's not breathing. Oh my goodness. So weird. How old was your person? Uh, 25. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yikes. Mine was older. Yeah. But good. That's why we stay on the line with you to check your status after a seizure. Right. Yep. Um, so next after that is diabetic problems, which um, could lead to seeing safety, depending. It can. Um, just because I know, it, I don't, I mean, I know people that are diabetic, but I've never seen this firsthand again. But um, when your blood sugar gets too low, you know, you, I know, it, learn how to speak, Sammy. You can appear like you're drunk. Yes. Um, you can become combative, mm -hmm. combative. Um, because you're confused. Is that I said it wrong? No, I, I combative. Think, I think it's just combative. No, but I'm gonna say combative. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you're right. An early sign of low blood sugar is abnormal behavior, which may include agitation, aggressiveness, impaired judgment, confusion, or and or combativeness. Combative. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> I feel like I've been saying that word wrong my whole life. Your whole life? Oh boy. And people are like, hmm? I know. It's like, oh. Anyway, so that could lead to scene safety, and we have um, questions to ask, obviously, to feel through that if we need it or not. The next one is drowning, near drowning, diving, scuba accidents. So basically, water related incidents. Right. Um, these are pretty severe. Yes, because drowning is pretty severe. People can't breathe in water. <laughs> Dang it. As much as we want to. And I would say um, when we've had people who need to be rescued from any lake here in town. So if you call and say there's someone who's in trouble in the middle of Boyd Lake, I'm not necessarily going to be using this unless they are out of the water and I'm able to help them versus me putting in a fire call where our dive rescue team will just walk out and do it. Right, yeah, because I mean, I feel like these questions are kind of irrelevant if you don't have a patient. Right. So if your patient's still in the water, these questions uh, don't matter. Right. Is that, am I, I going to get yelled at by the, one of the scuba instructors right now? No. <laughs> don't no. ask these questions ever. <laughs> don't do this unless, my distinction is, um, I had someone who was in um, the pool at Thompson Valley, mm -hmm. and they jumped in. They hit their head, mm -hmm. and they were they needed help getting out. But the people you could get it because they're in ten feet of water. Versus um, someone whose boat has overturned on Carter Lake, and you have to have a diver swim out to them. Right, because. I think the lake is a little deeper than 10 feet. Yes, and again, patient versus no patient yeah. access to them. All right, next is electric electrocution slash lightning, um, same safety. Again, this is gonna be one where we may send out fire because lightning sometimes leads to fires. Mm -hmm. um, this is another one that could have multiple patients. 
uh, this is a huge, 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 huge on scene safety, basically, because if it's electrocution, like, what caused it? Mm -hmm. Like, we, it's especially for caller safety, I feel like, right. because I, if someone got electrocuted, I, I would caution you to go near them because I don't want you to get electrocuted because then I lose right. my information. Right. So, well, uh, and also it's not good that we have more than one patient now. Right. If we didn't already. So. Which is our first law of safety. Yeah. To create more victims at the scene. Yeah. Also, for lightning, if you can hear thunder, you can get struck by lightning. So, if you're out, out and about and you're, let's say, at a lake or you're camping or something, Ooh. please just be careful. Yeah. Who was I talking to the other day that they said that, um, I don't remember who it was, but they said that there was somebody that, there was like a group of people on like a lake or a pool or something and electricity or like lightning struck in the pool or the lake or something like that? Uh, there was one out at Boyd Lake and- That's what it was. It hit the, uh, some generator or something that they had, like a cord, oh. so the person got whatever it was from the, like the lightning and he was touching the cord and- Oh. Oh, yeah, that's scary. That's so bad. Yeah. Yeah. This is why weather scares me. So, <laughs> when there's lightning, you won't see me nowhere. Um, <laughs> next is eye problems slash injuries, which thankfully doesn't happen a lot because that's I hate. Really uh, it's just like, as a, call, as a call taker, I feel like we visualize things that are happening. Yeah. And like, just imagine right now as the watcher slash listener, imagine someone saying that they have like a pencil stuck in their eye mm -hmm. or something like, uh, this, it gets under my skin. This question, I just, the, your thing should stay inside your body. So when I have to ask, is the eyeball cut open or is fluid leaking out of it? Oh man. Because then we're visually, if you say yes, there's fluid, fluid leaking out. <laughs> That's why we're on this end. I cannot. Right. Big shout out to all the in-person first responders. Seriously, I can't. Oh, 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 oh. Next. <laughs> um, falls. I think this is um, a card that we we go to a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one that I, I can understand why people would get frustrated with some of the questions that we ask. But being in this job, I also understand why they're so important. Yes. They're especially important to our responders. They're sport, they're important to the patient. They're just important. Um, so like falls can be pretty severe. They're traumatic. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're standing down and you fall and you hit your head on the edge of the counter, that's pretty severe. If yeah. you're on a on a roof and you fall, that's really severe. If you're depending on how tall the building is, like. It, falls are severe, so um, we ask questions for a reason. We ask specific questions for a reason when it comes to falls. Um, so just be patient with us because we're, we're asking all of these questions for a reason. It's not just because we're wasting time. We're right. not. We need to know these. The responders need to know these. Um, we might be able to help you if something is so severe. Right. That's why we ask. Right, and that's another thing like Erica said earlier, like um, if you don't, wait, what did it say? Hold on, where did I find that law? Okay, the Friends' Law is a thing not looked for is seldom found. So if you didn't tell me there was serious bleeding and I didn't ask, right. then this person's potentially bleeding out. Right. <laughs> so we wanna make sure we ask for things like that. So next is headache pretty explanatory. Um, headache could shunt us to stroke. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's that. Um, next one is heart problems slash AICD, which is automatic implanted cardiac defibrillator. So like a pacemaker. Mm -hmm. um, so if your pacemaker shot off, that's what we would go to. Um, next one is heat slash cold exposure. I feel like those are two completely different things that they put into one card, but they have very similar questions. Right. So that's why they're there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you've been exposed. Yeah. You've been exposed to something heat or cold related. <laughs> Next one is hemorrhage slash lacerations. So if this is non traumatic, wait, non traumatic? Yeah. I would. Mm. So like you accidentally uh, cut yourself while cooking. Right, cutting up things. Um, or you are working with um, a saw. 
Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. Or like a bloody nose. Um, mm -hmm. So just bleeding that's not traumatic. So if you got stabbed, we wouldn't be going here. But it's just that. Next is um, inaccessible incident slash other entrapments that's non-traffic related. So um, say you were working on, a, what is that called? It's like a trench. Yes, like a trench they were working on and somehow it collapsed on you. That's something that we would send on. Um, you would also be getting the fire department for this. Mm -hmm. um, depending on the severity of all of these situations, you may or may not be getting right. the fire department. But this is one of those that the fire department would be more equipped to handle um, mm -hmm. entrapments. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Like the machinery you have to. Mm -hmm. Fire department responding sometimes is for manpower, so to assist, sometimes mm -hmm. it's actually for equipment. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, those fire trucks, they aren't just for looks, right? Mm -hmm. No. Look at that. They darn, darn good looking fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> no one said no one ever. <laughs> so for a firefighter, maybe. Right, maybe. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. You're like, oh, look at that nice big truck. <laughs> so shiny. So shiny and red. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, next one is overdose slash poisoning. Um, this would be a scene safety thing. Mm -hmm. um, if it's an overdose, we're going to send police. Um, if it's intentional, accidental, like those kind of things matter. Because um, if people are potentially overdosing, they could be violent, they could have a weapon. So, mm -hmm. yep. Uh, next is the pregnancy card. So everything to do with babies. I don't like this card. It's, um, it's just, it's a lot. So I think especially if it's a childbirth, Ooh, there's so much that we have to work through. It's a really long, obviously it's a really long process. It may be. Who knows? Nine months, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like a year. <laughs> oh, man. But I mean, even after we ask six questions, we still have to go, we have a whole other set of questions yeah. and uh, instructions to give during a childbirthing process. So. This card is just, it's its a, it's a call in itself. It's huge. There are so many different ways it can to go. go and so many complications that might arise. Yeah. But we can help you through all of it. Yeah, we can. Even even if you get to me, and I, I, I fear this card so much, but even if you get to me, we'll work through it together, I promise. <laughs> uh, so I might just cry afterwards. This one I hope you get the most out of all the ones we've talked about. Jeez, oh. We've had a lot of childbirths this year. Three? Oh, we have we had three? I know for sure two. I know Lindsay's had two, and Heidi had one. Lindsay's, um, she didn't actually like get to the birthing process, but it was um, somebody like, called in that was in, in labor. Okay, so super close. Super close, Which, but she didn't actually get to it's deliver it. It's really rare. I mean, even though we've had three, and I think last year we had two. Yeah. There, that's the most that I think I've ever has ever happened here. I guess people are just trying really hard to just stay home. Maybe especially because right now of COVID. I don't know. I think the last one we had, what we assumed was that, because um, they were on scene for an hour after oh, wow. we disconnected from the phone. Yeah. So I think what we thought, it's probably incorrect, but what we thought was that the, um, the family wanted to be there for the birth and they couldn't yeah. do that at the hospital because they're only oh, allowing one visitor. That makes sense. So that's what we were thinking. Yeah. But that's the only one we've had during COVID time, yeah. so I don't know what the other excuses were. What were your excuses? <laughs> I had one, and the baby um, was delivered. It wasn't breathing, so we got to go through the um, making sure that it was portion. That's the all got. So. Yeah. So, yeah. That was fun. I listened to that call there. It was really nice. That was the one that I was, like, trying to follow along, and at one point I was on step, like, Two and Eric was already at like step six, and I was like, "What is going on? <laughs> Where are you going?" But I've gotten better since then, guys. Don't Good. panic. Yes. Uh, <laughs> next is um, psychiatric slash abnormal behavior slash suicide attempt. So this card is a huge scene safety. This card is also one that police will be sent on mm -hmm. for scene safety. Um, this is another one where it's like violence, weapons. Um, you know, things like that. If there, if you call in because your friend is suicidal but you don't know where they are, 
we will mainly just go probably with police questions, mm -hmm. not so much EMD, which is emergency medical dispatch. But yeah, it's one that if we do have a patient, we will ask these questions. So yes, yes. Next is one of our favorites. Yes, sick person, catch all, literally. So if just keep this in mind after we finish completely, but if listening to all of the above and we still don't know where exactly to categorize it, that's where this card kind of helps us out and it will shunt us if for some reason during uh, case entry you didn't offer these up. Again, a thing not looked for is often knocked out. So um, like bleeding um, and pain. So for bleeding we're obviously looking to shunt to hemorrhage mm -hmm. if we need to control bleeding and stuff like that. If you're alert, level of consciousness, breathing, the important things that we ask at the very beginning. And then um, the pain is more looking for chest pain. Mm -hmm. So those are basically, we're gonna kind of like, maybe it's in here. Um, yep, it sure is. So priority symptoms. That's, it's basically these four questions are making sure that we cover our four priority symptoms, which are um, breathing, like abnormal breathing, uh, level decreased level of consciousness or just your level of consciousness in general um, chest pain slash chest discomfort and then serious hemorrhaging so those are the four things that are kind of like very important for mm -hmm. your life so uh, those are the four things that basically if you don't fall into any other category we go to sick person it's just vetting us through those four questions to make sure we didn't miss anything and then gonna send us to where we need to go from there next is stab slash gunshot slash penetrating trauma so that would be like we had said before like it literally says it in there but that's going to be a scene safety thing like is the assailant still nearby stuff like that um next is the stroke slash transients a ischemic thank you ischemic attack ischemic 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 a tia a tia <laughs> tia -A. um which is a lack of a better term, mini stroke. Yeah. Uh, so this is where we go. If you think that someone's having stroke symptoms or you give us a level, or a level, if you give us uh, four things, like uh, his, he can't move his left arm, mm -hmm. his left face is kind of droopy and he can't speak. If, I if, got you. If, basically, if you say like, if they're having speech problems along with new added mobility on one side, we're probably gonna go ahead and go through this card because that's, in our head, it's sounding like a stroke. Yes. Yes. Next is um, traffic slash transportation incidents. So this is where our car accidents, we do that. So that could have more than one patient. So there we go. And this, this, this card is basically going to be sending medical, fire, and police. Yes. Next is traumatic injuries. So this would be like if somebody got hit in the face by a horse, got bucked in the face by a horse, that's traumatic. Um, what else? Oh, if you're playing soccer and you break your arm. Yeah. So like things like that. So something that doesn't really have a mechanism of injury, but it is traumatic in nature. Yes. Yeah. Next is unconscious slash fainting. So we would go to this card if during key questions you say they're not awake, but they are breathing. So that's good. As long as they're breathing. If they're not breathing, that's a whole other thing. But if they're not awake and they're breathing, good. We're going to go with questions and evaluate from there. Um, if something is near fainting or fainting, this is where we go. Unknown problem. So if you're um, driving down the side of the road and see somebody on the ground and you're you're going to work or going home or something and you're not able to stop and check on them, this is where we go. Um, or this is what we do for a lot of um, medical mm -hmm. um, alarms because unless they make patient contact, if, you, if medical alarms just get um, an activation on a pendant or whatever the device is, and they didn't make patient contact, we'll just go through here. Uh, so it's just one of those, it's, we're trying to, again, feel through important things and see what's going on. The next is transfer slash interfacility slash palliative care. So this is like if a doctor's office is calling us or a nursing home or somewhere in which um, has doctors slash nurses on scene to um, help. Uh, this, we're kind of more going to, um, try to decide if we're going, um, to 
like all of the other questions, I don't know why I'm saying it for this <laughs> part, just this one. Um, we're trying to decide whether we go uh, life of science or not. So, especially when there's doctors on scene. Unless, never mind, I'm not going to say I'm done talking. No, it's, it's helpful. Yeah, doctors on scene are very helpful. So, for the most part, if you're not, if the patient isn't having like severe symptoms, you'll probably just not cruise over, but they'll, they'll drive at the time and speed that you're driving. Yes. Um, so then we have a whole bunch of extra cards here at the end, and this is just our instructions for cardiac arrest, for we have different ages for how we do cardiac arrest and how to tell people how to do CPR. Um, we have instructions for Heimlich. So these are called pre-arrival instructions. Yes. So before they get there, pre-arrival, we can help you do any number of things. Yeah. Which is yeah, that's gonna be nice. Yeah, and then um, controlled bleeding, and then again, um, two very long scars. Oh, yes. For how to do uh, pre arrival birth instructions or delivery instructions. I mean. Um. So all the ones that we've talked about, but also we can help with Narcan instructions. I was like, that's not what that's what I wanted to be. So Narcan instructions. If your accelerator is stuck on your car, I can help you stop the car. Yeah. Um, if your car is in water, so you accidentally drive into a lake or it, there's a flood and it the flood comes upon you quickly, I can help you get out of the car and hopefully get to safety um, while my units are still responding. Um, Epinephrine. EpiPens, when we were talking about the um, envenomations, inven inven if you're super allergic, if you're allergic reaction to peanut butter or whatever, you have an EpiPen, your friend needs to administer it. I can help you through that. Yeah. Um, and then there's also, uh, for cardiac arrest, we have a little thing that helps us with AEDs. And AEDs, AEDs one yes. Is available. We will ask on those cardiac calls every single time. Every time. Because I know it's might be frustrating as a caller if we say if there's a defibrillator available, send someone to get it now. Um, because it's not common to have one into your house. In your house, no. Right, but in like public places such mm -hmm. as a library and stuff like that, uh, they are very available. Mm -hmm. So it's important to send someone to get it because we want somebody, especially our caller, to be with the patient so we can start CPR until mm -hmm. the AED gets on scene. And um, I guess this is a good way to introduce the we have had two life saves with AEDs. At least. At least. That I can think of off the top of my head. It was in the Loveland High School, was it? Talk about me. Both. Oh, both. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there was another one, um, I think, out at Johnson's Corner. Yeah. So so it's definitely something that we say for every situation, because there are people that do have them in their homes. Yes. Um, and we don't know. Again, it's one of those things that things not look for is something that's not found. So. And Loveland is a heart safe city. Mm -hmm. I forget which organization that's through. I should have checked with Becky first. My apologies. But the businesses in town, have a lot of them do have it. Um, like you said, the schools. And we are notified when businesses do put yes. AEDs in their businesses. And um, so if someone calls in from, let's say, uh, business, 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 Let's Walmart. say the library. Oh. Okay, or Walmart. I'm not sure if Walmart. Sorry. Do they? I would assume so. I would hope so. Because yeah, it's such a big business. Yes. That you would think they so, have something. So if you're in Walmart and you say, can someone go get it? You're like, I don't know if they have it. I can tell you. Tell someone or you go and get it. It's near the cash register number one. I don't know if that's where yeah. it is. And then we can, we can use it. And I can yeah. walk you through how to put it on, but AED should have instructions for you and so it talks to you yeah and i was going to say it t literally tells you what to do mm -hmm. so that's really helpful especially in like a panic situation where like even if you knew how to use it it's nice to have a voice yeah and that's my word here we're also the yes. voice that helps you focus on what to do you have two voices yeah maybe three like maybe me. a bunch yeah <laughs> um so next would be so we did three arrival instructions mm -hmm. and then did we do pre-dispatch instruction? Post-dispatch instruction? Yeah, that's what I meant. Post-dispatch instruction. So that is what we call PDIs. So it would be something that we say on every single call, mm -hmm. except for if it's a third party, because you're not with the patient. So right. um, we basically 
I think say like if you're getting more information, yes. call us back immediately. Um, but otherwise, um, we don't want people to have anything to eat or drink. Uh, we're we're allowed. People can have small sips of water. It's just the thing that if their medical condition is so severe that they need to go into surgery. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when you go into surgery willingly, they don't want you to have anything to eat or drink. So that kind of makes sense. So just keep in mind of that. But also, depending with what's going on, eating or drinking something, you could throw up. It could make you worse. It just depends. Right. Um, we do omit that for um, diabetics that are alert because eating some things or drinking something would, would maybe make you feel better. Yeah. So if you if, need to. Yeah. So if you need, if, if we won't, hopefully, if there's times where like I'm just so like autopilot for diabetics that sure. are alert that I'm just like don't have anything to eat or drink. Wait, well, never mind. Go ahead. Ignore yeah. what I just said. You can have something to eat or drink if you if that's what you think would be best. Um, and then we have an instruction for a difference between medical and trauma. So medical is like just rest in the most comfortable position and trauma, we don't want you to move because it's another one of those things like if it's traumatic, that could mean that there's internally injuries, internally mm -hmm. injuries, there's internal injuries and it moving you could hurt you more basically. So like falls, another thing like that. Right. It could break a rib and it could puncture your lung because you moved or something moved you. So. Keep that in mind, and then uh, we want to make sure that we make the scene as what's the word I'm looking for? I want to say accessible. But I'm not that's what I was thinking oh, too. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's not right. It just is a uh, easy for the both responders and the patient. Sure. Like, so we will ask for you, the caller, if you're able to, or if it's first person, if you're able to put away any pets because we don't want them to get out because they have big appointment, they've got to get through the door. And right. they might even leave the doors open depending on what's going on. Right. So, And, I don't know if yours, mine bark. Oh yeah. They will oh, not yeah. stop. So maybe we can put them outside or in a, in a different room that will make it a little bit quieter. Right. Um, gather medications or a list of those because it's helpful for paramedics because if somebody's allergic to something or if I'm not a doctor again, but if they're taking something and that could be reacting with another medication, like it's just good for them to know. Mm -hmm. um, and then unlock the door. That's also very helpful because if if you're not able to unlock your door, they will figure it out. They have tools, and unfortunately, if it comes to it, they could break down your door. <laughs> but if you're having a medical issue, I think that's the least of your concern, or at least it should be. Um, so unlocking the door is helpful just so that they can just go right on in. And then if it's at night, um, turning on outside house lights is very helpful, especially on the county mm -hmm. where um, it might be hard to spot or if your uh, houses are really close together. Uh, they are far back in the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then if you're in a vehicle, um, turning on hazard lights will just make them, because if you're in the parking lot of Walmart, think about how many cars they have to look mm -hmm. through. So turning on your hazard lights or like knowing the aisle number or about where you are will really help out. Um, and then depending on the severity of the situation, we will either disconnect or we will stay on the line. And we determine that based on a few things. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, sometimes it's dispatcher discretion. If somebody's really worked up, I'm probably going to stay on the line with you just because I don't want to, like, I don't know. I, that's just my... Well, I don't want to hang up a phone uh, or hang up with someone who's super scared, yeah. mad, sad. Right. That's not good customer service. That's not yeah. good like human humanness. Yeah. And if you're a kid, I'm gonna stay on the line with you. Right, because I mean as a child, I imagine that's a very scary situation. Yeah. I would if I was a kid, I would want that support. Mm -hmm. So um, another thing is like uh, with uh, mental health, if people are emotionally unstable, like really upset or um, threatening to kill themselves, I would want to stay on that line. Yeah. Obviously, um, if people feel like they're going to faint, that's something that can change super quickly. Right. So that's another thing where like, I don't want you to move around. Um, so, and I will stay on the line because if you do faint, that's something that I can tell my responders because if you stop responding to me, you fainted, they're going to respond if they're not already responding as fast as possible. Um, another thing is breathing problems because if you're not breathing well and you go unconscious, CPR. Yep. Yep. And then um, <laughs> chest pain because that is another thing that can change very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
So that's pretty much one of the reasons that we would stay on the line, or several of the reasons why we would stay on the line. Another reason is that depending on our line of questioning, our computer system slash this card system will work out whether it is what we call an alpha response, a bravo response, a charlie response, a delta response, or an echo response. And echoes, whoop, and echoes would be like the ones that we said, um, cardiac arrest, fast right. track. Um, someone's choking and there's no breathing, no um, no air going through. I was gonna say, the prickles. Oh, okay, yeah, so um, allergies, if you can't breathe, I'm sure it's probably low. Yeah. The next would be like breathing problems, ineffective breathing, mm -hmm. it's gonna be an echo. Um, depending. Then burns. So I've had this before. It's the worst. Uh, person on fire. So if someone's on fire, we're going. So uh, that's great. Um, obviously, the next would be obviously, because you guys can see what I'm looking at. I keep saying obviously. I'm so sorry. Um, cardiac arrest. We already said that, but um, like strangulation, suffocation, um, hanging. So those things where somebody is not breathing at all. We're going to be sending our echo response. Choking, I said, drowning, um, electrocution, lightning, and then unconscious slash fading, because those are ones where it affects something that could mean your life is going to be in extreme eminent danger. Yes. Yes. Extreme. E for yes. extreme. Um, the next one would be delta, which is, it's pretty severe, that's what's going on, um, but it's not as severe as an echo. Right. Right. Um, Charlie would be like, I'm not as extreme as a delta, but I'm more extreme than, so you still need lights and sirens. Right. I'm not quite there yet, but we still need to go. And in our environment, Charlie and Delta are at the same thing. So we don't have, we have a Charlie for stroke, but we don't have a Delta, but they get the same response. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So they're both lights and sirens, both fire and EMS going as fast as Yeah, fire. that's another thing. Um, basically, some Bravos, but basically from Charlie up, mm -hmm. you're getting both a fire truck and an ambulance. Mm -hmm. Why, you may ask? Because depending on where you are, since these are such severe situations, excluding echoes, uh, because you'll get police too, but just for fire medical sake, um, the fire station and the police, or I'm sorry, the ambulance station are not at the same place. So depending on where you are, the fire truck might get there faster, the ambulance might get there faster. It's also good because of extra manpower, because if you're in cardiac arrest, or if you're not breathing very well, it might be nice to have the extra manpower to carry the extra equipment that they may need. But also the firefighters have trained EMTs, so they will be able to assist you until the ambulance gets there to take over the transportation portion of it all. So we do that for you. We don't do that to annoy you because, oh, we're gonna send a fire truck, and of course you would send a fire truck really late at night and it's blocking my house now, you know? <laughs> we're not doing that to annoy anybody. We are doing that for your health. Yes. In response. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Bravo um, is, it's like, you need an ambulance, but we don't need to go license sirens. So are you looking for a reason? Yep. My or it could be. I think I just said this. Um, we we don't know. We don't have a lot of information. Mm -hmm. So we're like we're gonna go faster. Right. But we're, we're gonna not gonna go, go as fast. Right. So I believe Bravo. So you don't do sirens. That is correct. Um, yeah. I think it depends on the information. You know I don't. Because if it's a Bravo sick person, they're probably not gonna go sirens. Right. I think they might go a little faster, mm -hmm. but I don't think, but then if they're going faster, they need sirens. So it's like, it's kind of like from the same thing. We'll get back to you on that one. Yeah. I just imagine in my head that they're not going sirens. Um, and then alpha is basically like, they're going to the speed limit and stopping at every light. They're, yeah, they're just going through traffic. Yeah, they're just going through traffic. So it, this is how we rate basically their response. And we can always update them if things change. That's yes. why if we disconnect the phone on the alpha, we say call us back immediately if they get worse in any way or whatever. And if you do call us back and all of a sudden they're not breathing, we're going to upgrade that and then we will, they will respond appropriately. Yes. Yes. So that's what that is. Okay. So this was medical. Questions we asked? And yeah.
the, the main questions that we asked that are very important, and we didn't go into every single question that we asked because that's a lot. But yeah, just be patient with us, listen to our questions, answer the questions, they're there for a reason. Yeah, answer the best of your ability. If you don't know, that's fine. Yeah, just let if, us know. If I can tell you're getting annoyed with me because you don't know, I will say, if you don't know, that's okay. Yeah. It's totally okay if you don't yeah. know. If you're able to find out, even better. But right. if you don't know, you're still helping me. Yeah, you're still helping me, you're still helping the person that needs to help. Exactly. So. Um, next time we'll be talking about <laughs> a surprise topic. Surprise topic. We'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> until then, um, just make sure you check us out on Facebook at Loveland Emergency Communication Center. Follow us on Instagram at How to Nine One One Podcast, and then you can email us if you have any questions about this. Please, because I think um, Erica would love those. I would. I love it so much. Yeah, um, Erica's really good at this, like I said before. So, yeah, send us questions at how to 911 at cityofloveland.org. And then um, we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, see you. Yeah, see you. Um, until then, know where you are, know your phone number, and tell us exactly what happened.